You're watching the Aramco 2022 F1 car reveal series. Alpha Tauri went where big brother team Red Bull feared to tread with the launch of its 2022 car, giving us a more revealing look at its new 8003. And given there is some sharing of parts with Red Bull, it also gives us at least a few gentle hints of what to expect when the Red Bull RB18 finally breaks cover properly. Alpha Tauri hopes this car will allow it to build on its most successful season ever in terms of points, as despite it remaining one of F1's smaller teams, the cost cap ensures it's at less of a disadvantage than it was previously. Expectations are always high at Alpha Tauri when it launches a new car, with team principal Franz Tost describing the 8003 as something very special. And it has certainly revealed a car with some genuine differences compared to what we've seen so far during launch season. The car is scheduled to run for the first time on Tuesday, February 15th, meaning Alpha Tauri will be the second team to get its 2022 car up and running on track after Aston Martin. So with the help of technical expert Gary Anderson and our technical illustrator Rosario Giuliana, let's take a closer look at whether the car has what it takes to deliver on Alpha Tauri's high hopes for 2022. One of the most noticeable differences between the Alpha Tauri and what we've seen from others so far is that the main plane of the front wing is attached directly to the nose. Aston Martin, McLaren and Haas have all had variations in which the second element of the front wing is attached to the nose, with the main plane attached to that by a series of vertical stays. The nose is also a little longer than what we've seen elsewhere. This is a more literal application of the regulations that isn't far off what we saw from f one show car, so it does seem that Alpha Tauri is hiding its real design and will have a much more advanced front wing to put on the car when it runs. After all, Alpha Tauri does have previous for this and did just that with a fake nose on its launch renders last year before running with its genuine narrow nose in the real world. The front suspension is a conventional pushrod design, but Gary Anderson suggests the geometry should suit the needs of the tyre well, with more camber as the suspension compresses at high speed to accommodate the higher cornering forces. The outer bargeboard splitter is similar to that of the Aston Martin in length. This is to separate the turbulent tyre wake from the airflow going into the underfloor, and there are two other vertical turning vanes coming down from the surface of the underfloor. These are going to be very powerful because they will separate sections of the underfloor and will turn some of the airflow outwards, meaning that the flow nearer the centre of the car is what the diffuser has to work with. The leading edge of the underfloor has a small radius similar to the McLaren. This makes it more critical to flow direction. Behind that, the slide pod inlet is more like the Aston Martin, with a very square shape. The top is at the maximum height, while the vertical outer edge maximises the inlet size and keeps it as near the centre line of the car as possible to keep it away from the front tyre wake. This is because you want the lower edge to be as high as possible, as it diverts the airflow coming around from underneath the chassis into the aggressive undercut on the side pod. The side pod shape is relatively conventional and lies in between the extremes of McLaren and Aston Martin, so either this is a happy medium or the definitive car could move more in one direction or the other. This area is all about maximising the airflow to the rear of the car to work the diffuser, beam wing and underside of the rear wing. There are none of the cooling louvers on the top of the side pod used by Aston Martin, but Alpha Tauri's side pods are shorter, sweeping down into the coke bottle area to create a downwash effect for airflow. This leaves the upper part of the side pods for the radiator exits, which are located either side of the rear top wishbone, exiting the cooling airflow into the airflow the beam wing is presented with. The rear of the car is where we get a few hints about the Red Bull RB18. Alpha Tauri not only uses the same Red Bull badged Honda power unit, but also the same gearbox and rear suspension. So assuming what Alpha Tauri has revealed in the launch images is legit, this is effectively our first look at aspects of the new Red Bull. Alpha Tauri has the conventional pull rod rear suspension, meaning McLaren remains the only team so far to have gone the push rod route. Assuming, that is, what we are seeing on the Alpha Tauri launch car is real. 
the lower wishbones are omitted from the images, with these likely to be a version of the Mercedes-style swept-back wishbones after Red Bull was forced to achieve a similar effect without making the required major structural changes last year thanks to the upgrade token system. The rear wing itself is a twin pillar design, with the DRS actuator between the mounts. Given the sensitivity in this area, AlphaTauri is definitely hiding plenty. But there's also signs here of a neat and tidy package that can be built on with the secret new parts that will come in the short term and with future development. Since the team formerly known as Toro Rosso was rebranded as AlphaTauri in 2020 in deference to Red Bull's fashion brand, it has climbed F1's midfield ranks. But mixing it with bigger operations such as Ferrari, McLaren, Alpine and Aston Martin is not easy. By having a car capable of being the third quickest on occasion last year, AlphaTauri punched above its weight. Indeed, 2021 was the closest it has ever been to the front in terms of average pace. The introduction of brand new regulations in 2022 is therefore a big test of AlphaTauri's technical capabilities both in terms of design and development. So can it sustain this rich vein of form? Despite being recast as a sister team to Red Bull rather than its junior team, AlphaTauri remains the poor relation, literally. But the introduction of the cost cap last year, along with the more equitable split of the F1 revenue shared between the teams under the new Concord agreement, means it's not at so big a financial disadvantage as it once was. It also has the benefit of a supply of Red Bull components. The AlphaTauri ATO3 not only uses the Red Bull badged Honda engines, but also Red Bull's gearbox, rear suspension and hydraulics. While these are the latest 2022 specification parts, the menu available to AlphaTauri is a little smaller than usual given it usually has the pick of all year-old transferable parts. Another benefit of being owned by Red Bull is that thanks to the regulations governing usage and occupancy, AlphaTauri is now sharing its state-of-the-art wind tunnel in Bedford. This means AlphaTauri is the last team to move from a 50% scale model to the maximum allowed 60%. It completed the transition to the new wind tunnel last year, with the 2021 car designed in the old tunnel but developed using the new one. This allowed it to go through the learning processes associated with such a change. So there are reasons to be optimistic for AlphaTauri and the team itself is setting ambitious targets. But there's always a risk that it cannot sustain its form given the greater resources of those it is competing against. AlphaTauri may have overachieved in terms of car performance last season, but it underachieved when it came to results. It had the fifth fastest car on average, yet finished only sixth in the Constructors' Championship behind Alpine. Although that matches the best position in its history, it really should have been one position higher and potentially even closer to fourth placed McLaren. Lead driver Pierre Gasly was among the six fastest qualifiers 16 times in 22 races last year and occasionally ahead of the Ferraris and McLarens. But despite having similar average performance to the teams battling for third in the Constructors' Championship, AlphaTauri slipped into a battle for fifth with Alpine. The major problem was that Yuki Tsunoda scored only 32 points compared to Gasly's haul of 110. However, even if Tsunoda had matched Gasly's contribution, AlphaTauri would still have been further off the top four in the standings than its performance level suggested it should have been. With Gasly's strong form assured, the key is that Tsunoda is both quicker and more consistent in 2022 than he was in his rookie campaign. He at least has a career-best fourth place in the season-ending Abu Dhabi Grand Prix to show what he's capable of and has genuine potential, but he needs to take a big step forward. The team also needs to minimise the off days, as there were several occasions last year when its pace vanished, notably at Silverstone and during the race in Qatar after Gasly started on the front row. It has shown it can be consistently quick, but to fulfil its potential in 2022, it must also consistently get the results. If it can do that, and produces another good car, then despite concerns about whether it has the resources to continue its recent form, then AlphaTauri can continue to be one of F1's overperformers.